flows. Techniques remain same both for yoga and tantra. One wants to discuss sex and sex is everyone's problem. No one wants to discuss love because everyone feels he is a great lover already. And look at your life. It is just hatred and nothing else. And whatsoever you call love is nothing but a relaxation, a little relaxation of the hatred. Look around you and then you will know what you know about love, that you are also in the dark. And Tantra starts with you as you are. Tantra starts with you as you are. Tantra wants to enlighten you about basic things which you cannot deny but you go on ignoring. Tantra wants to enlighten you about basic things that you cannot deny but go on ignoring. If you try to deny them, it is at your own cost of bliss. For fruition to happen through sex, surrender insight to life energy. The life force is the first criteria. When this surrender happens, as a result of that surrender, fulfillment comes in. When you surrender to a master, this is symbolic. Really, you are surrendering to the life energy within. When inner surrender has happened, only then you can surrender to your lover or beloved one day. Without inner surrender, Outer surrender is not possible. Outer surrender is simply a symbol. Tantra says this happens and it also says how it can happen. Only you have to be in total harmony with life energy. Once you are in total harmony with the life energy, the process of transformation can begin and it does begin. Never treat any person as a means. Treat everybody as an end in himself or herself. Then you are a religious person, really. Then you do not cling. Then you are not attached. You love, but your love gives freedom. And when you give freedom to the other, you are also free. Only in freedom does your soul grow. You will feel very, very happy. The world has become a very unhappy thing, not because the world is unhappy thing, but because we have done something wrong to it. The same world can become a celebration for you when there is an inner change. When there is an inner blossoming, then the world becomes heaven for you. If people are allowed to, de to live their sexual life joyfully, really spontaneously and naturally, then the time they are nearing 42, remember I am not saying 42, not 84. When they are nearing 42, sex will start losing its grips on them. When it is not happening that way, you are not finished with sex. Sex has not dissolved. Just as sex arises and becomes very powerful by the time you attain to the age of 14, 
in exactly the same way. By the time one is 42, sex starts disappearing. This is natural and spontaneous. But before it begins to dissolve, it must reach to the peak. It must give you total satiation physically, emotionally and take you to the spiritual realms as well. But the mind wants to know if these techniques belong to yoga or tantra. What does this matter if these techniques belong to yoga and tantra? This question that arises to many is indeed irrelevant. The techniques remain the same both for yoga and tantra. But there is a basic difference. You can use the same technique with a different philosophy behind it. The framework and the pattern differs, not the technique. You may have a different attitude towards life, just the contrary to Tantra. When you are fulfilled sexually and in every aspect of your life, your attitude towards living and life changes. You continue to live the same way, wake up in the morning, prepare the meals, go to work. Everything remains the same but changes your attitude towards life. Each automatic automotive vehicle uses a radiator, coolant and a fan for example to control the temperatures of the engine. The type, size etc. will differ from vehicle to vehicle. However, each vehicle will use a radiator, coolant and a fan. Yoga is the path of a struggle. Yoga is basically the path of will. Tantra does not believe in a struggle. Tantra is not the path of will. On the contrary, Tantra is the path of total surrender. Your will is not needed. For Tantra, your will becomes a problem. The source of all anguish. For Yoga, your surrender, your willlessness is the problem. Because your will is weak, that is why you are in anguish and suffering. For yoga, this is what yoga says. You suffer because your will is weak and that's why you are in anguish. For tantra, because you have a will, because you have an ego, an individuality, that is why you are suffering. Tantra says bring your will to an absolute perfection or totality and you will be liberated. On the contrary, Tantra says dissolve your will completely, merge in that of the totality, become totally emptied of it and that will be your liberation. Since both are right, this creates a problem for an awakened one. Both are right, but both works differently. But the path of yoga is a very difficult one. Gautam Siddharth followed this path, but he is unique in many ways. It's not that he was not fulfilled. He had a fulfilled sex life. But he chose the path of yoga that was relevant at that time. It is just impossible, nearly impossible that you can attain to the perfection of the ego. It means you become the center of the whole universe. The path is very long and arduous. This means it never reaches to the end. So what happens to the followers of yoga? Somewhere on the path, in some life, they turn to Tantra. That's why 
my focus is on the basic intellectually yoga is conceivable but existentially it is impossible if it is possible you will reach by yoga also but generally it never happens even if it happens it happens very rarely such as to Mahabir, such as to Gautam Siddharth. Sometimes centuries and centuries pass and then a man like Mahabir or Gautam Siddharth appears who has achieved through yoga. But he is rare, an exception and breaks the rule. But yoga is more attractive than Tantra. Tantra is easy, natural, and can attain and you can attain through tantra very easily naturally and effortlessly you don't have to make much effort but you attain much deeper results and because of this tantra never appeals to you as much why anything that appeals to you appeals to your ego whatsoever you feel is going to fulfill your ego will appeal to you more. You are gripped in ego. Thus yoga appeals to you very much. Really, the more egoistic you are, the more yoga will appeal to you. Because it is pure ego effort, the more imp impossible, the more it is appealing to ego. That is why Mount Everest has so much appeal. There is so much attraction to reach to the top of the Himalayan peak because it is so difficult. And when Edmund Hillary and Tain Singh reached the Mount Everest, they felt a very ecstatic moment. What was that? It was because the ego was fulfilled they were the first to reach there. When the first man landed on the moon, can you imagine how he felt? He was the first in the entire human history and now he cannot be replaced. He will remain the first in the entire history to come. Now there is no way to change this status. The ego is fulfilled deeply. There is no competition now and certainly there cannot be. Many will land on the moon but they will not be the first. But many can land on the moon and many can go to the mountain peak. Yoga gives you a higher peak and the more unreachable the end, the more there is a perfection of ego pure, perfect, absolute ego. Yoga have appealed to Frederick Nietzsche very much because he felt that the energy which is working behind life is the energy of will, the will to power. Yoga gives you that feeling. You are more powerful through it. That's why yoga appeals to many it is theoretically, it is impossible and it appeals to you. Tantra is natural and is spontaneous. It is existential, but it does not appeal to the people in the first place. Enough for now.